everyone, it's Lenny. Welcome back to my page. Uh, this video is going to be my June TBR and also a trip to Hogsmeade. Okay, so today, which is the 1st of June, um, Book Roast dropped this mini book challenge. Um, I hadn't actually seen it, but uh, my friend Amelia challenged me to do it, so I immediately watched the video to see what the prompts were. I'm going to put the map up here so you can have a look for yourselves, and I'll put a link down below to um, Book Roast's video. I'll go through all the prompts first, and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do for the prompts. I actually already had my TBR pick for this month, and luckily I've managed to work it around so that I have enough that fit with the prompts. Um, okay, so number one is the Marauders map, because we're sneaking into Hogsmeade because we don't have a permission slip. Um, so for that one, the prompt is to read a book that includes a map. The only prompt you have to do is the map. Um, so I'll go on to the next ones now. I've got some uh, local honey in my Jude and Cardan mug, which is supposed to help with hay fever. It doesn't taste very nice, but I'll try anything. So wish me luck. So the rest of the prompts follow the shops around Hogsmeade. Um, so for the first one, we've got the three broomsticks. And the prompt for that is to read a book that's part of a trilogy. Number three is Madame Puttyfoots. And for that, it is to start a book with a cup of tea. I mean, I'm going to be doing this with all my books, so I'm covering this with all of them. <laughs> it's a very nice, easy prompt, and I'm very grateful. Okay, number four is The Hog's Head, and that is not so popular. Um, and so the prompt for that is read a book that has 10,000 or less ratings on Goodreads. Okay, prompt number six is Zonko's and that is read a book that is humorous. Um, I won't be doing this one because as I said, I already picked out my books and they're quite heavy this month. So I'm going to have to cross this one off. Number seven is The Shrieking Shack. And for that one, it is read a horror or a thriller. Again, I won't be doing this one because I don't read horrors and I very rarely read thrillers. That is very hard to say. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna scrap that. Also, if it was real life, I won't go anywhere near the Shrieking Shack, so I think that fits. Number eight is Scriven Shafts, and that is read a book written by a person of color. Number nine is Owl Post, and that is a book that you most recently got in the post or most recently added to your physical TBR. Uh, lastly, number 10 is Dervish and Bangs, and that is a steampunk book. Again, as I've already picked mine, I won't be doing that challenge. Also, it's a bit of an odds and sods shop. I've got no reason to go there. Okay, so now I'm going to go through what I've actually picked for my TBR. So the book for the first prompt, I've chosen City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. Um, I was planning to reread this book anyway because the third one comes out this month. I've also got Kingdom of Copper in this lineup too, um, but this one does have a map. I actually think all the books I picked this month have a map, um, but yeah, I'll just show you it now. Can't find it. <laughs> So this book follows Nari, who's a con artist living in 18th century Cairo. Um, she performs a ritual one night, pretending to release a djinn and accidentally does release one. Um, the story then goes from there because she has to go on a journey with the djinn and uncover lots of secrets about her own heritage and the world of Devabad. This series is incredible. I read it last year. I absolutely fell in love with it and I'm so excited for the last book to come out. Okay, so for prompt number two is The Three Broomsticks, and that is read a book that is part of a trilogy. Again, I could have chosen any of the David Bad trilogy, but I had to make all of them fit. You can repeat books in this challenge, I've been told, but I'm trying not to. So for this one, it's an ebook, and it is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Powell Pretto. Okay, so I'm going to just read the description to you because it's hard to summarise and my memory is terrible. So, in a world ruled by fierce warrior queens, a grand empire was built upon the backs of phoenix riders, legendary heroes who soared through the sky on wings of fire, until a war between two sisters ripped it all apart. Sixteen years later, Veronica is a war orphan who dreams of becoming a phoenix rider from the stories of old. After a shocking betrayal from her controlling sister, Veronica strikes out alone to find the riders, even if that means disguising herself as a boy. But is it a fact of life that one must kill or be killed, rule or be ruled? Just as Veronica finally feels like she belongs, her sister turns up and reveals a tangled web of lies between them that will change everything. And meanwhile, the new empire has learned of the riders' return and intends to destroy them once and for all. Sorry that was a bit wordy. Again, I, I tried to summarise this a few times. I did another video and I just couldn't quite word it properly. Um, so I thought I'd just read the synopsis so it'd be a bit easier for people. 
I think this sounds brilliant. I'm really intrigued by all this Phoenix mythology and more and more books are starting to come out that involve phoenixes. I've said before in a previous video that I think more books should include phoenixes and this very easily could have been a Dragon Rider book and it isn't and I like that it isn't. I also like the parallels between the old story and the new story. I'm really intrigued to read it and I will probably end up buying the paperback anyway because I know the sequel's out, um, the third book isn't out yet but they're just really pretty books because they were free on Kindle Unlimited I was just like right I've got to get these read because I don't know when I'll read them otherwise. It sort of pushed me to put it higher up on my list. Anyway so prompt number three is Madam Puttyfoot and that's start every book with a cup of tea or maybe a cup of honey if you're uh, suffering like I am. Um, I will be just having a drink with all of these books because I drink tea quite a lot anyway. Um, so I feel like I'll just cover that with all of them but then it means I've ticked off another shop on my journey around Hogsmeade. Okay so prompt number four was The Hog's Head, so not so popular. So that had to be a book that had 10,000 or less ratings on Goodreads. Luckily two of the books I'd picked this month fit into this category um, but for this one I'm going for The Raven and the Dove by Caitlin Davis. Um, I will read the synopsis again for this one because again I struggle to summarise because my memory is atrocious. Okay let's go. On the dawn of her courtship trials, Princess Lyanna knows she shall be focused on winning her perfect mate, yet her thoughts wander to the open sky waiting at the edge of her floating kingdom. One final adventure calls. Upon fleeing the palace, the last thing she expects to find is the Raven Prince locked in a death match with a dragon. A bastard aching to belong. Reviled son of a dead king, Rafe would do anything for his beloved half-brother, Prince Lysander, including posing as him in the upcoming courtship trials. When a dragon interrupts their secret exchange, he orders his studious sibling to run. After suffering a fatal blow, Rafe is saved by a beautiful dove who possesses forbidden magic, just like him. Fate brought them together, now destiny will tear them apart. Unknown to the world above, on the foggy sea 10,000 feet below, a young king fights a forgotten war. He believes Lyanna is the queen prophesied to save the world, and with help of his favoured spy hidden deep in the highest ranks of the Dove Royal House, he will stop at nothing to have her. Three shocking betrayals, two star-crossed lovers, one unforgettable journey. Now this sounds a little bit cheesy but I'm also really into it. I, I quite like the cover art again even though it's a little bit cheesy but sometimes I feel like you just need a little bit of cheese and a little bit of fluffiness. I've looked at this book repeatedly and again it was on Kindle Unlimited and I thought right just, just do it, just get it out of the way, just read it now. As I've already said a lot of the books I'm reading this month are quite heavy and I think this will be quite a nice sort of breather because I think it's going to be an intense month. I didn't read it. Okay for prompt number five we've got Honey Dukes and that was to pick a book with a pink or green cover or a cover with sweets on it. Now again I said I wanted to try and fit my TBR into this and luckily it did. Um, so this has got a green cover obviously. So I've gone for Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty and this is the second book in the Devabad trilogy. Um, it follows Nari and her friends in Devabad um, and it's also set five years in the future. I really like that when I read this the first time because the characters matured a lot of situations that came to a head at the end of the first book have sort of had time to mellow and uh, the characters have got used to it and I found that really refreshing. Again I'm really excited to read this again, this ends on such a cliffhanger and I'm so so excited for the third book. Okay so book number eight is Scriven Shafts and that is a book written by a person of colour and for that one I've picked The Poppy War by R.F. Quang. I'm sorry if I've said that wrong. Again I'll read the synopsis for this one, I'll try and be quick but it's quite hard to summarise. So here we go. When Rin aced the Keiju, the empire-wide test to find the most talented youth to learn at the academies, it was a shock to everyone. To test the officials who couldn't believe a war orphan from Rooster Province could pass without cheating, to Rin's guardians who believed they'd finally be able to marry her off and further their criminal enterprise, and to Rin herself who realised she was finally free of the servitude and despair that made up her daily existence. That she got into Sinagard, the most elite military school in Nikan, was even more surprising. But surprises aren't always good. Because being a dark-skinned peasant girl from the south is not an easy thing in Sinagard. Targeted from the outset by rival classmates for her colour, poverty and gender, Rin discovers she possesses a lethal unearthly power, an aptitude for the nearly mythical art of shamanism. Exploring the depths of her gift with the help of seemingly insane teacher and psychoactive substances, Rin learns that gods long thought dead are very much alive and mastering control over those powers could mean more than just surviving school. For while the Nikara Empire is at peace, the Federation of Mugen still lurks across a narrow sea. The militarily advanced Federation occupied Nikan for decades after the first Poppy War, and only barely lost the continent in the second. 
And while most of the people are complacent to go about their lives, a few are aware that a third poppy war is just a spark away. Rin's shamanic powers may be the only way to save her people. But as she finds out more about the god that has chosen her, the vengeful phoenix, she fears that winning the war may cost her humanity and that it might already be too late. So again, this sounds very epic. It's got phoenixes as well. It's very different. I've heard a lot of hype about this book. It really put it on my radar when V Schwab left a review on Goodreads and she's one of my favourite authors. So I thought, right, this has got to be good if she really likes it. But this also sounds very heavy, so hopefully it'll be good. This is also part of a trilogy um, and I'll probably end up getting the other books. But again, this is on Kindle Unlimited and I've got my free subscription at the moment. So it'll force me to read that one. Okay, the last... Jesus, that crow's massive. There's a massive crow in the garden now. It just made me jump. <laughs> it's eating all the bird seeds and driving Ben insane. Okay, last one for me is number nine, and that is Our Post, and, and that is a book that was most recently delivered by Post, or is recently on your TBR. So for this one, I've picked Empire of Gold, which is the third book in the David Bad trilogy. Um, it will be released on the 11th of June, so hopefully it will be my most recent book in the Post. Um, I've got it on pre-order. I'm hoping to have the other two finished by then. I've set myself a very strict schedule this month. Um, so I've got six books, 30 days, all the books are about 500 pages, give or take. So I've got to read at least 100 pages a day and it is like every single day, no days off, it's going to be hard going. But hopefully it'll be worth it. And they all look like really good books, just quite heavy. Thank you to Book Rose for creating this challenge because it's added a bit of extra fun to my monthly TBR. And thank you to Amelia who challenged me to do this tag. She's also getting involved, but again, um, you only have to actually do one prompt. It's not like owls where you have to get so many to uh, complete it. You can just, as long as you've got the map, that's fine. You can do what you want. If anyone else is taking part in the little Hogsmeade mini readathon, uh, let me know. So let me know what uh, prompts or shops you're going to. I'll put the link for Book Rose video below so that you can see it yourself and you can pick what you want to do. But yeah, thanks for watching. And if you want to like and subscribe, uh, that'll be great. If not, don't worry. And that's my June TBR. Thanks for watching.